All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are still in version 1.2 of the game, this time having a look at the Configurable Containers mod, which is being made by forum user Alista. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is the conversion of all the stock fuel tanks and resource containers so that you can change what resources they hold, and you can do that in either the editor mode or, of course, while in flight. And now now I know that there are already a couple of different mods out there that do similar things, such as procedural parts, modular fuel tanks, and of course, fuel switcher, but the reason I've really come to enjoy this mod since I found it is because, well, first and foremost, it changes the stock containers, which I've come to know and love those parts. I enjoy building with them, so being able to modify them to my needs is a wonderful thing. And the second reason I love it is the sheer insane amount of configuration that you can actually do with these, or rather probably a better word to use is customization of the containers and it's wonderful. So let's jump into the VAB and have a look at how this mod works. And so first we'll need a command pod so we can eventually take this thing out to the launch pad to play around with it in flight and then head down here to fuel tanks where I need to talk about the first little division in this mod. Now there are different kinds of tanks that you have to basically think about in this game. You have these simple containers, such as RCS fuel tanks, that are only designed to hold a singular resource. So of course in here, it's 750 monopropellant, and that is basically all it's meant to do. So if we change the resource in this container, it can only ever hold one resource. So no matter what we change it to, whether it's liquid fuel or ore or xenon gas, it doesn't matter. It will only be able to hold one resource. That is all. Then we also have compound containers, such as the Rocco Max, and these are containers meant specifically to hold multiple resources. Because of course, they're built by default to hold liquid fuel and oxidizer. So we can change both of these to whatever we desire, plus we can even add more resources in there, and that, that's pretty awesome to do. But before we do that, let's jump, jump back to the simple containers, as well, they're the simplest to go through. Now before we can actually edit what this holds, we actually have to do something first, and that's drain the tank of fuel. So if, for instance, if we have the fuel in there and try to change it, we get this warning up here that tank is in use. Now I can completely understand that for when you're in flight mode, it'd be kind of weird to suddenly try and change the resource a tank was holding when you still had a resource in it. That would be kind of strange. But when you're here in the editor, it feels a bit awkward having to drain all of your tanks before you can actually edit them. But now that this is empty of all monopropellant, you'll notice we have two different bars up top here. The first one is the type of resource, currently liquid chemicals. And the second is the kind of resource. So from liquid chemicals, we can either have monopropellant or if we change it here, oxidizer, or change it again to liquid fuel, and then we come full circle back around to monopropellant, as those are all the resources within the liquid chemicals type. Now, if we change, say, to the next type, that is soil, and there is only one thing in the vanilla game for soil, and that is ore. Now, same thing with gases. We only have one gas in the form of xenon gas, and then if we click this again, we're back to the liquid chemicals, where once more we can do liquid fuel fuel, monopropellant, or oxidizer to your heart's content, and that's basically all you can do with the simple containers. And if this was all the mod had, I probably would just download Fuel Switcher and deal with that, because this isn't exactly the most interesting bit. Where the game, or where the mod rather, really shines is down here in the compound containers. Instead of those little bars, we have a button here for editing the tank. And if we click that, we get this lovely UI. So let's move this over to the side here so you can see it better. And first, of course, we need to actually empty these tanks so we can edit them. So once again, we can go to here and just drag this down, but notice something changing there on the UI. We have this fuel indicator right there, 
showing that it's 50% full. And so you know if that's full or not, so whether you can actually edit the container. And so we're at zero. But what's fun is right next to it, we have a couple of buttons. The first is an F. That will fill the container back up, which is very useful because once you're done editing this container, you can be sure to fill everything back up so you know that it's nice in the green. But we also have this E, which will, of course, empty the container. We then also have a delete button, but we'll talk more about that momentarily. For now, let's go over to these two columns, which just like with the single container, we have the resource type here, which currently is liquid chemicals. And then over here, we have the resource itself. So either liquid fuel oxidizer, or if we so desire, we can change that liquid fuel to monopropellant. So now we've already edited this compound tank down here. It's now monopropellant and oxidizer. And that, that right there already is entertaining and fun to me. And of course we can change this one again to liquid fuel or as we'll show here, one of the issue, well, not an issue with the mod, but an issue with uh, just the container system and how the game works, is if we switch this to modern propellant, you get another warning that the part cannot have more than one of any resource, which makes sense. Why would you have a compound tank that has two sections of mono propellant. You might as well just have a single tank. And that's because of this little bit right here. This column right there shows how this compound tank is split up. Now you'll notice up at the top, we have available volume of zero liters of 9.9 .9 cubic meters. That is the total amount that this container can hold. And right here in this column shows how that container is divided between the resources. So right now, with monopropellant, it's only picking up the first one, so we're getting 4.4 .4 cubic meters. And it's not picking up the 5.4 because, again, it doesn't make sense to have two monopropellant tanks in a compound container. So if we switch this to oxidizer, now it's 5.4 cubic meters of oxidizer taking up that room. And, well, what if you don't want oxidizer? We can always go over here and change the resource type to soil. Now we're holding 5.4 cubic meters of ore. Or we could go to gases, and now it's 5.4 cubic meters of xenon gas. And we're back to liquid chemicals. And you can just kind of go about this however you like. But that still just limits you to two resources. What's the best part about the compound containers, and in my opinion this mod, is we can completely change this thing. Now there is occasionally a weird little glitch that sometimes it doesn't like uh, me deleting things after I've edited stuff, so let's close this real quick and just for safety's sake grab a new Rocco Max. It's a weird little bug that I've gotten just a couple of times, but to make sure we don't get it here, let's grab a fresh one. And now what we wanna do is get rid of this liquid fuel and oxidizer cause say we wanna do something really wacky with this ship. So let's just hit these X's to delete the, those two containers. And then what the heck, we're on gases. So what we have up here is the tank type and say we want to add xenon gas into this tank. We just hit the gases one, select how much volume we want. So say two cubic meters. Now we could also hit the maximum key here, which would bring it up to the full tank or the half button, which sometimes doesn't work when you, after you've hit max. So there we go. I change it back to one and then half. And there we are, it's half the tank, but I'm gonna put it back to two. And then you just simply hit add. And there we go. We now have two cubic meters of xenon gas available. Now let's say we want uh, some soil in there. Again, we'll leave it at two, add that in, bam, there we go. Now what about monopropellant? We'll go to liquid chemicals, we'll stick it at two, add, there we go. And of course we'll have to change that to monopropellant. And what's fun here is now finally, let's add in some liquid fuel and oxidizer. Now we could add in liquid chemicals twice, but we also do have an LFO category down here. And if we click that, hit max, it'll be the maximum remainder of the tank, which is 3.877 cubic meters, and hit add, and it'll split it into a viable ratio of liquid fuel and oxidizer there, so you're good to go. And you just need to fill all these tanks, and now we have a Rocco Max with five different resources. Now, of course, they're taking up and adjusting for their different cubic meters that they're holding, and that's perfectly okay. 
and I love that. And now say, for instance, you've done all of this work that you've adjusted everything for, and maybe say you want to save this. Well, we can do that down here. That's what this bottom bit's for. We can con save this configuration, so let's just call it ASD, and we'll add that configuration in here. Now we're going to have to close this, grab another Rocco Max, and just pop it onto the bottom, and we'll go to edit this, and now if we go over to the side, we can use the same dropdown, and we have this ASD one. If we click that, delete these containers, then hit maximum and add, it adds in our little ASD configuration that we had saved. So you just make whatever thing you want in here, then save it with a name, and you're good to go. And what's fun is if we actually chuck this thing out and grab, say, a jumbo fuel tank and do the same thing, it's still going to do the ASD configuration, but it will automatically adjust the uh, volume to match the bigger and or smaller tank. So there we go. This one is taking up 39.5 cubic meters total. So rather than I don't, I was two cubic meters before, now xenon gas is eight cubic meters, etc. down the line. So we'll auto adjust so that it will completely fill the new container, whether it's bigger or smaller. And that, that's just awesome. I really love that ability to save these configurations. It will save you a lot of time for when you are making these weird custom things. And of course, you can always go into them later and change things. So we can delete out all of these, just leave that as liquid fuel and oxidizer, or change the whole darn thing to an ore container, whatever you so desire, it is up to you. But let's actually, we'll make it liquid fuel and oxidizer here. We'll go max and add. And then up here, let's uh, change this one to gas. And what we're going to do is actually head outside now. So I've basically shown you everything that you can do in here with this. So now we go outside to show you what you can and, of course, can't do outside. So, for instance, if we go down to our giant container here and manage this tank, we have this button here. So we can actually theoretically change this in flight. Granted, we have literally all five resources here, so what would you possibly change it to? But nonetheless, we're in flight, we can. So we have this tank manager here, and you'll notice on it we just have the uh, xenon gas and ore with no arrows, because that's the type that they are. Gas does not have any other gas to change it to. Same with ore, it doesn't have any other soil type to change it to. But these three, are of course liquid chemical fuels and so we can change these if we so desire but of course again we get the tank in use now i of course do have hyper edits so we can go in here and uh drain you of monitor propellant liquid fuel and oxidizer perfect there we go and we could change this one to oxidizer which then of course since we already have oxidizer here we get that same warning of two resources We'll change that to monopropellant, because, well, there we go. And that one now to liquid fuel. I mean, basically all we've done is just reorganize where they are, but it's something you can do. And then you either refill them up by a uh, refueling station or whatever it is that you have in place and be on your way. And of course we can do that with other containers. So say this one that's liquid fuel and oxidizer. Say if we don't need the oxidizer anymore for a mission, you just need the liquid fuel and mono propellant. Well, there we go. We can now switch it over to mono propellant. And that's why I love this section the most because sometimes, especially with space planes, I may not always need oxidizer so I'll need it for one mission and then I can change it to a useful mono propellant for another mission or any other thing in between and with these larger tanks that you can change to multiple resources you can just configure it however you want and it's very good now of course the last tank we have is xenon gas and it's just the one thing there so we can't really do anything adjusting with that but for any of these ones where we can move a few things around, particularly if it's liquid chemicals, then you should be good. And now I have actually played around with this with some other mods, and as long as they've tagged their resources in the mods with one of those categories, either soil, LF, or liquid chemical, etc., it should show up in here. I haven't really had any issues with that so far. So as you add in other mods, then you know you may have other choices for soil, etc. But this is what you have for right now. 
and I love this mod completely. So if you would like to check this out for yourself, I definitely say to go and give it a try. You can take a look at the link in the description as always. Uh, but yeah, that's really going to be it for this mod today. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one.